All tomorrows, the future of humanity? Will your descendants evolve into asteroid-dwelling, fart-propelled alien creatures, or will they cram their brains into a big metal ball? If I upload a human brain into a machine body, what kind of being is it? And what tech support line do I call to make it stop killing everyone? More importantly, what that tongue do? All this and more in The Asteromorph Gravital War. If you haven't seen my first video about All Tomorrows, you should definitely go watch it. It covers the earlier parts of the story, including the Martian War and the Q, and if you don't know that story, you're gonna be really confused. Knowing that this is YouTube and most of you won't do that, here's a quick summary of the last video. All Tomorrows is a book by C.M. Kozman about speculative evolution in which Earth terraformed Mars and then Earth and the newly established Martians get into a war. They almost all die, but then they don't and create the star people to colonize the galaxy who promptly get Cronenberg by the Q, which turns them into a myriad of strange and uncanny forms, which eventually evolve into a series of new humans with their own societal structures. Got it? Good. The post-human species made contact with each other over vast distances to establish an alliance of species. They found out about the Q and were wary of being horrifically Cronenberg for a second time. Two human species didn't join this alliance, one called the Bug Facers and one called the Ruin Haunters. The Bug Facers were a species once known as the Insectophagi. They fed on insects using their long and strangely suggestive tongue. Over millions of itchy years of bug bites, their faces hardened so as to protect from the incessant chomps of their prey. They were soon attacked by an unknown alien race, which instilled a lot of xenophobia into their society. The Ruin Haunters didn't really have an excuse. They were just kind of awful for reasons I'm about to go into. The Ruin Haunters were still biologically dunked on by the Q, but because the Q was sloppy when it was destroying the tech, the Ruin Haunters still had access to some of the Star People's tech technological marvels. This allowed their society to advance technologically without needing to advance socially, culturally, or likely for the average citizen, intellectually. So basically, imagine if you went back in time and got the most violent, superstitious, mentally incapacitated caveman you could find and gave him an automatic weapon, an iPhone, and a car, and just let him loose on the street. So it's that, but that person is everyone in society. Because of this, they had massive worldwide nuclear wars and almost destroyed the entire planet. Evidently, they were completely insane, and the sustained trauma and radiation over generations probably didn't help. The weird Squidward-faced people thought they were the only ones worthy of being an ancestor to the Star People. They eventually ditched their flabby biological forms and uploaded those same undeveloped, scarred, irradiated brains inside of flying metal orbies that could manipulate their surroundings with gravity fields. Unsurprisingly, they went full space Stalin almost immediately and began to eliminate all other human life. The Gravitals weren't described as hating other humans, they just saw them as we would an ant. I don't understand this comparison. I get that some people wouldn't think twice about crushing an ant, but people wouldn't travel the entire Earth to murder every ant in existence. That to me sounds like hate, or at least some sort of strange obsession with murder. Almost all of the awe-inspiring strange amalgams of flesh that we talked about last time were wiped out in one fell swoop. For some inexplicable reason, they kept the bug facers alive as material for genetic experiments. Oh, how heart distorting. The gravitals twisted them into the subjects, distorting a living being into any form on a whim. Remember the ad campaign There's an App for That? Made to show that any task, no matter how insignificant, had an app designated solely to it. In the gravital society, it's like that, but with an unconsenting conscious being. Imagine that for a dollar, you could go up to a flesh vending machine and genetically engineer a living creature to follow your friend around and screech whatever meme song is trending at unbearable volumes, only to put said animal down and genetically engineer a new one when a different meme becomes popular four days later. That is how the Gravitals do. The Gravitals made entire ecosystems out of humans basically just for fun and out of boredom. Like that kid Sid from the Toy Story after they got bored with their living thinking toys, they ripped the same biological materials apart and slapped them back together in a new form they had.
hadn't seen yet. Some Gravitals branched off into a new sect of thought and thought all life should be respected, so they created humans that could think and exist on their own. Some Gravitals fell in love with their humans, having a relationship with them like a benevolent god, and that's it. In order to avoid the societal problems between the two sects, the Gravitals did what anyone would do trying to avoid their problems. Find an external problem to distract yourself and deny that you ever had the other one in the first place. The Gravitals went to war with the Asteromorphs. This lasted for millions of years doing unprecedented damage to the galaxy, but the Asteromorphs were the victor. They took the subjects and created worlds for them to live in. On these worlds, they placed the terrestrials to watch over humans to make sure no one decided to do a galactic genocide again. These fleshy spider fetuses were usually pretty good guidance for the new humans, but sometimes they weren't. Likely on average, it just raised the bar up from immediately killing them, but hey, progress is progress. They didn't actually completely get rid of the Gravitals because it's pretty useful to have gravity robots around. To fix the whole mass killing part of them, they just kinda ironed their brains to smooth the wrinkles out. Think about it. If all toasters one day gained sentience and they said they wanted to kill humanity, would you A, get rid of toasters and never use them again, or B, just lobotomize them so you can enjoy your breakfast? They use the Gravitals as laborers in the galactic equivalent of coal mines. They also got new wiggly nanobot bodies. They eventually became citizens, but were often discriminated against on account of the whole trying to kill everyone thing. Okay, so that's the history of the Asteromorph Gravital War, and now I'm gonna go through a bunch of humans that I haven't covered yet. If you don't see your favorite, write me a comment about it, and if enough people ask for it, I'll make a part three after man after man. These are the blind folk. They're mice people that live underground and have no eyes. Chuck E. Cheese has smooth, flat skin where its eyes should be, and I hate it. Whoops, they're crushed. These are the hand flappers, and if I uncensor that, the robots say I don't eat this week, but that doesn't matter because they're dead. This is a human parasite on a human host. They evolved into a symbiotic relationship where the former parasite controlled the host from designated parasite roost on top of their heads, calling themselves the symbiotes. These are human predators, and they're human prey. Basically, human animal planet. The predators evolved into the killer folk with a society revolving around violence, and the prey continued just to be eaten and farmed. These are the lizard herders, and they got lobotomized by the Q. The lizards evolved into Soro sapiens, a species of human-like lizard folk, and they selectively bred humans into pets and livestock animals. These are the bone crushers. They communicated by pooping on each other and survived off rotten meat until they didn't, then they starved. These are the striders. They're so tall and lanky that they can't fall over without shattering all of their paper like bones, and they got bodied by giant chicken monsters. These are the sail people. They're basically living sailboats with long wiggly tongues to snag fishies and shove them into their their face holes. These are the Taro sapiens. They're smart and they fly, but their bodies break down quickly due to the pressure of flight, and they only live like 20 years. These are the Titans, and that they were at some point kind of smart, and they have a face dong, and this one guy got sad that I didn't include them last time. And now all humans are extinct forever the end. If you like this video, you should subscribe with all notifications enabled, like, and comment. I want to thank Supic for drawing all of these things. He's a great artist, and you should go check out his page. I want to thank Noah Westenberger for drawing all of these things. He's a great artist, and so you should go check out his page. I think after this, I'm going to do Man After Man. As always, like, sub, and hit the bell, and I will see you all in hell. <laughs>